I've been getting made fun of since I was five years old, about the time that this picture was taken. This was on my first day of kindergarten. And I walked in with my book bag on my back and a deck of cards in my hands. They were Pokemon cards, and I was in the top 10% of the state, and I was five. See, I was pretty proud of that, and I like to think that everyone else was going to be too. They weren't. The kids that cared, I didn't really care about because I was beating them on the playground. And the kids that didn't were mean, but I didn't care because I was five, and I was on top of my own little world. And I'm still here today, and I'm still shuffling a deck of cards. But how I got there, that was a bit of a rough patch. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. You see, when you're five, you don't really care what people have to say. So you do things that you want to do, and you can walk in, shuffle in a deck of Pokemon cards, and you don't really care, and it's great. I got my friends to play with me, and by the end of kindergarten, the game had swept the school. Everyone played Pokemon. Everyone knew what it was. It was the year 2000. By the next year, things had started to change. And by the third grade, kids started doing things like playing football, and reading books, and painting pictures, and they stopped playing my card game. At this time, I was really big into the card game Yu-Gi-Oh! And again, I beat everyone. I was pretty confident about myself. But the kids got meaner as I got older. And so what I found is that through my life, I've played every card game that there is, and I've beaten people at all of them. I win consistently. I like to think that I'm pretty good at it. Maybe I'm not, who knows? But the point is that you meet a lot of adversity on the way. You meet people that don't really understand your passion. And the kids get mean. By middle school, I face now that I was in a full-on depression. It was hard. I had lost almost all of my friends. Because the kids that I used to play card games had moved on to bigger and better things, and it's hard to relate. I just wanted to sit down and play card games. Is that so bad? So I closed into myself. I had lost all my friends, I accepted that. But I still had card games. And it didn't matter that five days a week I didn't have anyone to talk to because on Saturdays, I was still on top of the world. I was still winning tournaments everywhere I went. I consistently finished in the top four of every card game tournament that I was at for three years straight. That was a really big deal to me. It was a great confidence boost because the other five days of the week, I was on the bottom. But you learn how to deal with that. And so as I went through school, I started to change how I thought about it. Because when I was in the sixth grade, I was going through all my cards and I was sorting them. And I was building a new deck. And so in order to do this, I had to shop for more cards online. And this was a huge money pit to the rest of my family because they were the ones paying for it. I was 12, I didn't have a job. So I was gonna use their money. I was approached by a family member and asked why I was doing this. Why does this matter? It's a money pit, and I quote them saying, in five years, these are all gonna be in the trash or in the attic, and you're not even gonna remember it. And then they looked at the computer screen, and what they saw was something that looked a lot like this. I was mapping out card prices to guess when the best time to buy a card was because I understood that I was on a limited budget. I wanted to buy things cheap and sell things high. That made sense to me. I was 12, but it kind of made sense. So I was thrown another chart by the same family member. It looked a little bit more like this. It was a Pepsi stock chart, and they asked me what was going to happen. And I said, oh, that's easy. Sell. It's like, it's high. It's not going to keep going. Sell. So they did. They made some money off of it. Now, I'm a third year finance major at The Ohio State University. I do this every day. I tell people when to buy, when to sell, when to hold. And I use things like discounted cash flows and, and, uh, and different Bollinger Bands, but 
at this point, I was just 12. And I was just telling people what I thought based on a card game. I had no idea of the implications. My point is that things you do now have a funny way of creeping back up later. And you never know how it's going to affect you. See, now I do this every day, and if I would have never played card games, it would have never happened. This was the first step in my realizing that card games are a huge part of who I am. So I was in high school. I had known, I had realized this, revel I had realized this revelation that what I was doing was more than just a card game. So I decided that I wanted to be a business major, and I went into this. And I stopped hiding card games from people, and I started telling people what I was doing. I gained my confidence back, and I started making friends not that didn't understand who I was, but that either already played card games, or I could convince to play card games with me. I still have these friends today, and they're the best friends I could ever ask for. Now that I'm a finance major, I had to find other ways to incorporate trading card games into my life. And I found that this came a little bit easier than you might expect. See, when you sit down in order to get a job, in order to be successful in the financial industry, you have to go through these terrible things called interviews. And I can tell you, Mr. CEO, that I know what you're thinking before you know what I'm thinking. Because I've sat down across from over 5,000 people and beat them in trading card games. And you have to be able to guess what they're thinking first. You have to know what's coming and you have to be able to tell the future to some extent. And I can tell you that I can do that better than you. So it doesn't matter if you're making a million dollars a day or if you're homeless. If you're one of my residents, I'm an RA on campus. I can tell you what you're thinking and I can relate to you. And I can adapt my presence based on you. I've learned this skill because I've played trading card games with people. This silly game that no one ever thought would be a big part of my life is now the reason that I'm not introverted. I can be extroverted and I can speak in front of a person and I can have an intimate conversation or I can speak in front of hundreds and I'm not scared because I've been there. I've been there in my trading card game. Last year, I realized that I wanted to pivot what I wanted to do. Finance wasn't enough for me. I needed more numbers. I added a statistics minor. And again, I credit trading card games. In my first statistics class, I found out that what I was doing made sense to me. I was in a, I was in a master's level statistics class. Stat 5301. I was the youngest person in the class by about six years. And on our first day, we started to talk about combinations and how if, there, if you roll four dice and you're looking for a one on one of them, what's the chances that one of them are going to be a one given that one of them's a three? And I figured it out. Because I realized that it's a lot like shuffling a 60 card deck and knowing that you want one card and that you're drawing seven. It's the same thing. I learned graduate level statistics when I was 12 by shuffling a deck of trading cards. See, I'm not a top math student. I'm not the top of the class. I'm just average. But I'm average with trading cards, which I like to think adds a little bit that other people don't have. So this is who I am. I play trading cards. It's what I do for fun. And yeah, it's affected me huge. But what does that mean? It means that you have to be confident in yourself. It means that you have to do what you love because it's important. And you never know when it's going to be bigger. So yeah, you might get made fun of. And it might really hurt. And you might lose some friends. But don't not do what you love because of what someone says. So shuffle up. Throw that last pass and paint that last picture. Play that last match and write that last song. Because you never know when it's going to come back in your life and when you're going to realize that what you're doing is relevant. Thank you, everyone. Surge ahead. <laughs>